I used to work in fine dining. Oh, people come in, they spend 200 to 300 dollars per pack. I don't only want to cater for that kind of people, but for everyone. So, yeah. My name is Ellen. I'm 25 this year, and I'm a chef owner of Pornholic. I love cooking since young. I see my mom cook, I see the TV show cook, but I never have a chance to cook. My skills from cooking come from my mentor chef, which my sister introduced me after my secondary school studies. Since the day I start, I stepped into the kitchen. I always wanted to open a shop like this. The opportunity came when I saw there's a new hawker center coming up, doing hipster stuff like Pasir Ris Hawker Center. I took out my skills, I took out my courage to come and open a shop. Lah. I chose to open at this hawker centre because they made it in a way that it's more hipster, more fusion for more young people to come in. So I think that my food fits here. I love to eat prawn noodles, so I always go for that. And over the years, I see a lot of things are changing, especially hawker food, you know, it comes with a lot of different kind of fusion stuff. So I think, why prawn noodles, why cannot change? So I took out the courage and changed something very traditional into something fusion, atas a bit and affordable for everyone. Basically prawn noodles, but a fusion type of prawn noodle that you won't find outside. So it's different, different from the traditional one because we change the ingredients, like the traditional pork ribs, we change it to kurubuta pork, and we have homemade pork and shrimp ball and shrimp. It's slightly different from the traditional one, where they open up into two slices, we give two full prawns. For the special prawn noodles, it's a very normal kind of prawn. But if you take the king prawn noodles, right, it's actually fresh live prawns. Every day they come in fresh and live. Just that I kill them. Uh. I soak them into ice water and let them die. And then after that, it stays fresh. Uh. The kind of prawns that you don't get it anywhere. Uh. Maybe you go to restaurant, you'll get that restaurant kind of standard that kind of prawns. Very bouncy, very firm. The most popular dishes are king prawn noodles and king prawn udong. If you like your traditional yellow noodles, bihun, kway teow, I have. If you like, if you love udong, something new, something different, you can try the udong one. Prawn noodles, right? Usually people go for the soup version because of the prawn stock. I do it both very seriously. I take it both very seriously, even the dry one. So actually, my famous prawn noodle is the dry version. Comes with the soup also. But of course, if you like the soup one, my soup is also very good. The usual dry prawn noodles, they only put one sambal on top. But my one is, I homemade a black sauce, come with homemade dry shrimp chili, with homemade pork lard and shallots. So it blends in very well. Uh. Quite different from normal prawn noodles that outside are selling uh, for the dry version. The things that I put in, uh, it, it's more premium, I uh, would say. Being a hawker and a hotel chef, or a chef in a restaurant, is very different. Because in a restaurant and a hotel, there's always a team. You work together and you always work about food only. But when you work in a hawker, everything is you. There's only you. When your electronics, everything, your burner all spoiled already, you have to own self fix it. You know, when you don't have staff, you have to own self work. It's much more work, much more stress. But overall, I'm happy, la, happy to be a hotel. Yeah. At first, my parents were against it because I used to work at a hotel, restaurant, so they asked me, well, why not you just continue? If you can work your way up to be a celebrity chef, why not? You know, I don't really want to be a celebrity chef or a head chef or a sous chef, something like that. I don't want. I want to learn how to cook and cook for everyone I can afford to pay for. La. I don't want only to cook for people that has money to eat. Of course, they are good and bad. Some people that cannot accept fusion food, something new, they'll think that, oh, I don't know what you're selling. Eh. But after a few tries, after they get used to it, eh, then they know where I'm coming from. Then they slowly start to understand and accept the fusion out there. Yeah. I'm afraid of starting out on a holiday at first. Being a chef, I have a few fears of experience. If I go to another restaurant to work, I have my basic skills. I'm not afraid of it. But when you tell me to open a store as a hawker, as a business owner, I don't have any experience. Yes, you might know how to cook, but you don't know how to your accounting, the way you need to set up your store, your signature, your dishes, your menu. You have to take your Photoshop for the food. Everything you have to handle it by your own. So it's much more stressful. But overall, it's a very enjoyable journey. I think I'll never stop cooking. First of all, I love to cook. And I think I'll cook for the rest of my life. <laughs>